Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. I'm grateful to be sharing this devotion with you as we find ourselves in the fourth week of our journey away in the wilderness. And today's devotion is entitled Transformed in the Wilderness. The reading from Joshua this week is brief, but it recounts the time the Hebrews who left Egypt under God's care had so longed to see the end of their exodus and the beginning of their life in the promised land of Canaan. No longer would their food rain down from the heavens. Now they would be fed by their own produce. Joshua chapter 5 verse 12 says, The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. Certainly the people's entrance into the promised land is not the end of their dependence on God. Their food may no longer miraculously fall from the sky, but a new miracle springs from the land God created and is nurtured by farmers who embody God's creative care. Settling in Canaan is just the beginning of the story of God's people, not the end. But there is a transformation in the now settled people evident in the difference between manna from heaven and the crops of the land. In common language of today, we might call this the difference between charity and self-sufficiency. The church has been involved in responding to human need, especially hunger, since its very beginning. The sacrament of Holy Communion began as a full meal in the Christian community particularly for those who otherwise might not have been able to feed themselves. By the second and third centuries, care for people who were hungry or poor was so central to the church's identity that bishops, whose roles included managing the church's social ministries, were sometimes called lovers of the poor. Feeding people who hunger is still crucial to the church's identity. Our latest survey data shows that well over 70% of the ELCA congregations do participate in direct feeding ministries. Early numbers indicate that over 95% of congregations participate in some form of response to hunger. Feeding ministries can be crucial lifelines for the more than 38 million people in the United States who are uncertain of their next meal. During the first months of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, with sudden job loss and supply chain shortages, feeding ministries such as these swiftly adapted to meet the exploding need. This was critical support, particularly for those neighbors unable to access social safety net programs such as SNAP or the federal stimulus payments. Feeding ministries stand at the forefront of hunger work, providing opportunities for neighbors to build relationships and for communities to draw together toward effective solutions. But ending hunger requires more. As theologian Samuel Torvend has written, in addition to charitable response is discerning why people are suffering in the first place. And that moves us from charitable giving into asking the larger question, question, which is, why is there injustice? What is it within the larger system in which people live that produces this kind of suffering? Behind the long lines of, at food pantries and the pallets of goods at food banks lies the reality that ending hunger will require more than food. There are some times when we must focus our efforts together on meeting immediate need, but at all times, the church is called to do something more. The church's work in hunger responds not only to a problem, but to a promise. We know by faith that hunger is not what God intends, that the one who created and sustains us is leading us to a future in which all will be fed as surely as God led our ancestors through the desert to the promised land. The response of the church is rooted in a larger witness of faith, faith holding that the systems and conditions that created scarcity are wrong 
and that we can create a life of security and sufficiency even on this side of the fullness of God's reign. In Pueblo County, Colorado, Posada accompanies neighbors who experience homelessness as they work together toward this vision. With support from ELCA World Hunger, Posada aspires to provide for the immediate needs of people who lack stable housing while enabling them to address the problems that have led to their situation. Daniel is one of the many people Posada has worked with to secure housing. Assisted by Posada, Daniel was able to transition from a long-term care facility to stable housing that he can call his own. Posada continues to work with him so that he can pay for utilities. Posada helps neighbors meet their most immediate needs, connecting them to programs that offer funds for food and shelter. But the work doesn't stop there. Posada works with neighbors to secure the housing, support, and stability they will need to thrive in the future. As Moses and the Hebrews left Egypt, they were sustained by God's gift of manna. This food from heaven satisfied their hunger and helped them survive their time in the wilderness. But God had more in store for them, not just an end to their hunger, but a new life and hope as a future people renewed in their relationship to God to each other and to the land they could call each, their own. Eating their fill of manna was not the end, but the means, allowing them to reach a place where they would thrive on the crops of the land. Amid our own trial and challenge during a pandemic that stretched our food systems and charitable ministries to near capacity, we might forget the vision that inspires the church's hunger ministries in the first place. But during Lent, a season of self-reflection and renewal, the crossing over of the Hebrews from the wilderness to Gilgah, where they would become the nation of Israel, reminds us of that vision. We cling to this promise that God will provide not just the manna of today, but the crops of the land tomorrow, granting us a new opportunity to build community and share in God's journey toward a just world where all are fed. This is the vision that inspires, motivates, and shapes the many ways this church is active in the world, responding not just to the problem of hunger, but to the promise of God for a future in which all who are weary from journeying, from struggling, from working, from waiting, will find rest. Let us pray. God of our wanderings and our settling, you guided your people through the wilderness, your gifts of manna and water to sustain them. Be with us in our own times of uncertainty and fear. Send your spirit among us, that your church may be a sign of welcome in the world. When we are comfortable, open our hearts to our neighbor's discomfort. When we are uncomfortable, sustain us with hope and courage. Bless us that we may be blessings to one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time with me today and have a great week and peace be with you.